Here in Columbia, South Carolina, you're looking at the, the ring in the auditorium, an opera house, theater-like, packed to the rafters for two welterweights, the champion Mark Breland, and a great challenger named Marlon Starling. I'm Chris Schenkel, delighted again to be at ringside with Alex Wellu. Chris, a lot of people think that the two best welterweights in the world are in the ring here in Columbia today. No less an authority than the respected trainer, Angelo Dundee, flat out picks Marlon Starling to beat Mark Breland. One thing is for sure, you cannot develop into a great fighter unless you meet top opposition. With only 18 pro fights under his belt, Mark Breland is still developing. And if Marlon Starling is at his best, he has the experience and the ability to test Mark, to bring out the best in him, or to expose any chinks in his armor. It should be a most interesting fight. And just as contrasts and styles make for great bouts, we have contrasts in the tail of the tape. Four years difference, Breland the champion, that much younger. Look at the height difference. Wow. And then the weight is the same. One pound under the welterweight limit of 147. Mark Breland uh, noted at a, that six foot two and a half inch frame for a long reach, 77 and a half. They have never met before. Remember, Marlon Starling, at whom we're looking from Hartford, Connecticut, four losses. He has never been knocked out. He has never been knocked down in his lengthy career, which began in 1979. There is Breland, Golden Glove, National, World Amateur, Olympic champion, who has parlayed that gold into a world championship. His welcome in Colombia. Tony Perez will now give the boxers their instructions. Very competent referee, Tony Perez, will handle those chores. The three judges, Harry Cicini of Maryland, Carol Polis of Pennsylvania, Edward Levine of Florida. Perez sends them back to their corner along with their seconds, their trainers, their entourage, and in this 20 by 20 ring, we're ready for only the second fight ever in the capital city of Columbia, South Carolina. There's Grandma Breland. That's right, watching her grandson in his 19th professional fight. Here we go. Sterling told us he was going to be very aggressive, try to keep Mark Breland off balance, not let him get set, not let him get into his rhythm. Mark said he was going to try to work everything off the jab that he's been developing. There you see it there. Don't forget that when Mark won the title in February, he broke his left hand, and it required surgery. Since then, he's had only one fight, a 10-round non-title fight, over a mediocre opponent last month. Uh, he didn't baby the left in that fight, Chris, and he said there was no pain or swelling. It would be interesting to see if he throws it with power against Marlon Starling. Starling with those uh, eight-ounce gloves up alongside uh, his face. Good defensive weapon, and there he tried to uh, land the punch and duck inside and then tie up the much taller champion. And trying to use his strength against Breland. He thinks that he's stronger than, than Mark. And he thinks he can get inside and rough him up there. He said if he... Marlon told us yesterday, if Breland tries to clinch with me on the inside, I'm going to throw him out of the ring. Well, he threw him to canvas that time. Okay, a lot of timber there. Six foot two and a half inches. And Starling believes that... The champion is a clumsy welterweight. Well, we haven't seen Breland uh, too clumsy over all the fights that we have watched him uh, compete in. Tony Perez, the referee, taking a look at the face of Starling. We're checking now. There is no cut or anything, but Perez was looking very closely at the face of Starling in the red trunks. Marlon Starling called Mark Breland clumsy. I think he was overstating the case, but Mark does have a balance problem that he's worked very hard on. When yeah, he's on balance, he's very effective. But if you can rush at him, get him off balance, make him tender. There was a stiff left jab that just caught Breland's chin. And Breland comes back with a solid right hand to the side of face. Oh, and a good left by Sterling. Yes, Breland beautiful. holds on. Sterling, talk, Sterling said he would faint a lot. He's not. To this point, not juking at all. He's coming right at the champion. He's the ball and Breland's the matter. To Chris, we talked at the top about the question of Mark's left hand. There are other questions about right, Mark, which may be answered in this fight, namely his chin and his stamina. He's only been 10 rounds twice, and he's never been past 10. Charlie's already proven his staying powers. As you said, he's never been down as a pro. And he's fought Donald Curry two times. Once uh, shot at the title and lost a 15 round decision. Good uppercut by Mark on the inside there, Chris. Mark is just, uh, not that he's cautious, he's being patient. Break. Break this is the first round, if you just joined us, about 
The 10 seconds till the bell. Scheduled for 15. 10 point must. Three judges. The referee does not do the scoring. They'll get a rest in about three seconds. All right. Back in. Hold it. Watch that head. of his 147 pound world championship title. All right. He's on the left in the blue trunks. A probing round for Mark more aggressive coming from the challenger the number one contender in all organizations Marlon Starling in the red trunks very veteran tough opponent you just saw Marlon do what you talked about the first oh Mark almost walked into that right hand it just missed Marlon was trying some of that juking some of that feinting that he hopes will get Mark Greeland off balance Mark didn't take any of the feints he did however leave himself open when he came in and Starling countered well either throw the punch coming in or keep the duke up the left hand he dropped it, which is one of his habits. He'll drop his hands about waist high from time to time. You're talking about Mark Breland. Breland. Yeah. Mark is not in trouble, Chris, I don't think from leads. He gets in trouble after he yes. punches. He leaves himself open. He has there. to concentrate on jabbing and moving out of, not just jabbing, punching and then moving out of range. He has a punishing jab, Breland. It's not only long, but it's stinging, and it'll keep a fighter off balance. He's going to have to use it a lot against Marlon Starling. Exactly. That jab could be a good defensive weapon as well, Chris. Keep his man worried about it, not throwing his punches. Breland out from his arsenal. A right hand lead that caught Starling. We're in the second round. Remember, Starling has never been down. Oh, a uh, hook to the body thrown by Starling. Mark's left, down by his waist. He's now waiting for Starling to come to him. Mark Freeland says he likes a fighter who comes to him. But I think that fighter has to come in under control. When he comes in wildly, it gives Mark a lot of trouble. He doesn't know how to line him up. Good right hand to the Boy, body by Breland. He is putting shots to the body. Another one to the opposite side by Breland. Shoving him off, showing he has strength too. Starling is in no man's land. He's too close. He's close enough to get hit, but not close enough to land his own punches. He has to lunge in with right hands like that that Breland got out of the way of. Alex, he saw the opportunity with that left hand down. And... Now the champion Breland beginning to weave a little more. Not necessarily bob and weave, but weaving just a bit. A little bit of a moving target, and it's a good idea. As Sterling moves, he's hard to hit. And he's laughing, as a matter of fact, that that combination missed. Not that right uppercut. They'll get a rest in a few seconds. This is a world championship out. Welterweight, WBA, third round, scheduled for 15. The champion, Breland and Blue, and much taller. Marlon Sterling throws him to the deck one more time and now gets out. Strong caution from the referee, Tony Perez. Second time in this bout. In the corner, Breland's Joy Ferriello, the trainer, told him not to go happy with the left-right combination. Double up on the jabs. Good right hand by Starling. Marlon is not a big puncher, but he's a strong, accurate, sharp puncher. And of course, Chris, any time a potentially great fighter like Breland comes along, you want to see what happens when he gets cracked on the chin. Yes. Starting with 25 knockouts. Oh, again the right hand. Sucker for the right hand in this fight, the champion. Chris, it's little habits like carrying your left too low that don't show up against lesser op opposition, but when you move up to a Marlon Starling, he's going to take advantage of that. You saw Breland miss with a right uppercut. It's a punch that he wants to find the range for because with a covering up opponent like Marlon Starling, it will work. See, that left is a defensive weapon as well as an offense. Freeland in the past has either been tight or loose. We think he is in between. He's not as loose as we have seen him. Not as fluid. A lot of that has to do with the pressure that's being put on by Starling. 
saw Mark with four or five punches get Sterling's respect. Yeah, but look at Sterling pick off the punches. What a defense. That's below the belt. That one did not land. And he's laughing at Breland. Well, I wouldn't do that if I were Sterling. You're right that he did pick off a lot of the punches. That's one of the problems with scoring a Sterling fight. He carries those those hands up there like earmuffs, and you really have to watch which ones are landing on Marlon Sterling and which ones are landing on his gloves. But Mark Breland did get home with punches in that flurry and made Sterling stop. style confusing believe me but he's done something here in round three Chris which was essential I think he's gotten Starling's respect he's cracked him a few times and Marlon is not rushing in is not as aggressive as he was he has been caught with some heavy body he hurt him in the ear I don't think it was a devastating knockout punch it just hit him in the ear and you know if you get hit there it hurts Action from round three. Watch the right hand. Boom! And that is a sucker right hand. I mean, that was telegraphed by Marlon Starling, and it still got home, Chris. Right, and as we checked in the corner of Freeland, the punch did not shake him up. Stung him in the ear, however. That's Freeland on the left at 146. Same weight for his opponent. But no knockdowns, neither fighter marked. We're in the fourth round schedule for 15. Freeland's first defense. Good one two by Mark Wonder. Freeland, the right hand and finish with the left. The thing that you like about that, Chris, is he's not looking for the one punch. He's not just trying to take him out with his right hand. He's putting punches together. And Joey Ferriello, his trainer during uh, the rest period, told him not to try that one knockout punch. In fact, Breland now fighting a lot like Evander Holyfield, the junior heavyweight champion who is in the audience, along with Mike Tyson watching this bout. There's the jab, doubling up on it. And there's that body shot. That body shot is dangerous because it leaves Mark totally open. He has to bring his arm so far down because of his height. And again, Breland on the deck. And we'll see if Perez takes a point away. Tony Perez now. Cleaning the gloves no. as he should. Tony did not feel that that was much as much of a throwdown as the two previous incidents. What I was saying was when Mark throws that right to the body or the left hook, he has to bring his hand so far down because Starling is so short and he's so tall that he leaves himself wide open. Reeling with the quick hands, Cobra-like, in his approach to this sport. It's coasting him a little bit right here. First time he's done that. Exactly, Chris. Mark, Mark was not covering up when they came out of that little clinch. He's got to protect himself at all times. Another. And you saw the Starling jab get home. He told us yesterday he could out jab Mark Freeland. I think he can only do that if he slips Mark's jab and then lands his own. Desire on the part of the champion. Savviness on the part of the challenger on the right. Marlon Starling. Popular Hartford, Connecticut boxer. Okay, break. Break on, break. Last champion, as a matter of fact, in that state was the great Willie Pep. World champion. Saw Starling trying to cross that left jab with a missed right. Round four, about to end. Carolina, we've had no knockdowns, neither fighter Mark Breland in the blue trunks, six, two and a half, uh, shorter at five, eight. That is the challenger on the right and red, Marlon Starling. The World WBA Welterweight Championship bout. Breland's first defense. Breland has been wrestled in the canvas three times. Corner told him not to be too lackadaisical. 
Is that what they called the third run? Thought he was pretty busy, giving a good effort. You see in the first right. seconds of this fifth round, Chris, the strength and the weakness of Marlon Starling. He's covered well. He hasn't really been hit with anything of substance by Mark Freeland, but he hasn't landed anything of his own. He's concentrating again. Mark Freeland on the deck. All right, another warning. You heard Tony Perez say, next time I take a point, in between rounds, Joey Fariello went over to Tony Perez and said, Tony, he's thrown him down twice. Covering well, but not landing his okay. own punches. Right. That's well, the reason, Chris, so far in the fight through four rounds, I've given all four rounds to Mark Breland. He's oh, good, left, good right to the body and left hook to the head by Breland. They've been close rounds. Third round, exceptionally close. Yeah. But I just think Mark has been busier. The danger for Breland are the sneaky punches of the man that just landed to the midsection, Starling in red. It's a, his style is so confusing, dumbfounding. We'd like to remind our local stations that at the end of this round, we'll be taking a station break. That one uh, high on the shoulder actually caught the shoulder blades in the back. An uppercut just missed by Breland that would have ended it all. Okay, that uppercut okay. is the weapon, I think, in this bout. Mark got the best of that exchange, but again, he did not cover at the end of it, and, no. and Starling scored the last punch of the exchange. The thing you have to like here is that even though he's been clipped, especially with that punch near the end of round three, Mark Breland is still putting punches together, still trying things, Chris. Mm -hmm. Great retaliation, great retaliation by Sterling. ABC's Wide World of Sports featuring the WBA World Welterweight Championship. Okay, give me a we'll continue after this word from our local stations. Grab low, let him grab him. This World Championship fight has gone now to the sixth round, scheduled for 15. The champion Breland in blue on the left. Marlon Starling, 45 fights, 41 wins, 25 knockouts. The challenger and a very worthy contender. Man with a frustrating career. Okay, great. Really great. trying to oh, cover up as he bent over there, not for the effect of a punch. Tony Perez, the referee. Three judges scoring a 10-point must WBA rules. You talked about the patience required of Mark Breland because of the defensive skill of Marlon Starling, Chris. Right now, he's being a little bit more patient, taking his time a little bit. Now Marlon's complaining, he's holding me. He also shouldered Marlon Starling there. Starling likes to be disruptive, whether it's moving, punching, talking to his opponent, or to the referee. Now, it's a difficult one to yeah, judge. I think very Tony, difficult. He's taking the oh, point away. Gosh. That was very borderline, Chris. Freeland with he had the his long elbow legs. Up. Yeah, he had his elbow up in Mark's face. He was putting it on him, but Mark had been trying to put it on him, too. That, I think, was one of the least offensive of his offenses in that uh, But when you box, area. defend yourself at all times. This is what I'm trying to get to. Freeland is not the most graceful guy on his fins. Again, Starling complaining to Perez. So now Breland taking backward steps more than earlier. Now he's up on the toes. He's been really totally set for heavy punches earlier. Let's see him move a little bit. Move, but, but keep himself on balance and in a position to punch, to set himself to let his punches go. If he's moving all the time, he just has no power. Do like his fellow medal winner, Holyfield, who's watching. And his friend from Brooklyn, Mike Tyson, is also yeah. here in Columbia right. today. Right, they're about four seats apart. Someday they may meet. But we have a good enforcer here, ex-Dallas uh, Cowboy tackle Harvey Martin. He's bigger than both of them. And sitting next to Harvey, yeah. Denver Nugget forward Alex English. A lot of very talented athletes watching two very talented athletes in the ring today. Again, Breland with the shoulder and the elbow. And there 
as he threw that lead right hand, he had his left down, left hand down by his cup, and he got caught with a right hand by Starling. Like all of us, Breland does not like to get hit in the solar plexus. He'll get a rest in around six, four seconds. This is the incident that led to the point being deducted. Mark Breland ducking. Starling with his elbow up, and Mark really fell down. I, I would have to say, Chris, that I thought Mark Breland took a dive there. And he was holding as his, as Starling's trainer came out and told the referee, jo uh, Georgie Cruz, said, after all, Breland is holding. Well, matter of opinions, that's what makes boxing and horse racing so okay, a difference of opinion than the great Travers Stakes coming up right here on Wide World of Sports later. Freeland is the champion in blue. We're in the seventh round, scheduled for 15. Looking ahead, Freeland has gone 10 rounds twice. With the right hand by Sterling over Freeland's low left again. You've seen Mark do something here that I've never seen him do before. It's that, that push right there with the shoulder. It's almost like a, a blocking drill. He's pushing with his arms, but also getting his shoulder into Marlon Sterling. Trying to keep him outside. Now there again, Freeland pulled Sterling on top of him. jabs that got through another one that one blocked meanwhile while Breland tries to push his opponent away he's not in a hitting position he is right now there and Breland complaining of a low blow double building over it was a low blow what is wrong with Mark he has no stability on his legs he's been on the canvas I believe that's seven times that now. is we're in round seven. Yeah, okay. It was That's just at the belt, the shot. Of course, they were protecting. The blow was, I thought the blow was definitely low. There was a very good left hand by Starling, two jabs by Breland. Another one. You have to concentrate very hard, as we said, on how many of those punches are getting home. There's Mike Tyson. Watching Mark Breland, two of the outstanding fighters in the world, coming from a couple of adjoining neighborhoods in Brooklyn, New York. This is as far south as Tyson has ever been. That's right, that was amazing. He's south never Carolina. been to Florida. His family's originally from Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, he's missed a lot by not going to Atlanta, my favorite city of New Orleans. Columbia's pleasant. Mapped out, char charted out in 1785. And it was General William Tecunzer Sherman that came through here, destroyed the town, 1865. Or they rebounded. Again, Breland with the blocking tactic. Not a lot of good, clean punches being landed, Breland. Neither fighter able to. Uh, see, see. Marlon Sterling. Either Breland is really tired. Do I don't understand. This is a replay of a low blow. There you saw it come in, and uh, Breland bending over, indicating that it did hurt. Now we're in the eighth round. This could be a very pivotal round. We're not sure if Breland, a uh, little on the tired side, a little lackadaisical. Scheduled for 15, remember. Mark has never gone that distance, only 10 rounds twice. Starling has gone 10 or more 15 times. There is a shot. And there you see Mark. Cover from an unintentional low blow. Now you right. saw Starling acknowledge it right away. There it was. Starling knew it was low. He came right over to try to help Breland up. Didn't want to lose a point on it. Referee having the discretion to award the foul boxer. As Alex said, up to five minutes. Of course, you can't win by a foul, a low blow. That just may shake up, wake up Mark Breland enough. Oh, his jab is better. Yeah, he's not timid about using that left hand. It was.
was injured on, Chris, the thing he hasn't been able to line up is that right hand. That right hand right down the pipe. He's been using it to the body, and again, he bends way down. The thing you're concerned about here in watching Mark Breland halfway through the fight is does he have the physical strength? Right. You see there, he just flopped to the canvas. There was no, there was nothing there to put him down. He just flopped down. Very, very strange. We never question his courage. Only okay, the right. willingness, I think. Perhaps a little lack of it here. Now, this is his first title defense. And he's come back to Columbia, South Carolina, where he fought a boy named Twining and it lasted one round or stopped in the first round. He wants to make a good showing, but he's fighting an unorthodox, menacing, troublesome contender in Marlon Starling and Red. Look at him. Keep peppering away. He's bores in. And Mark looks a little bit tired right here. Yes. Second win. He has forgotten it. His legs are a little lethargic at this point. I think Mark Freeland's a very mentally tough kid, a, a determined kid. But when he goes down, flopping down like that, every time Starling puts any strength on him, Right and a left, and Mark tried to spin him, and he saw that's good. That's good. That's good. Starling put his left out and not let himself be spun. All right, the bell coming up, ending round eight in about five seconds. Comes out after a motivating, strong talk by his trainer, Joy Ferriello. All the work that you put in, and you're taking this, well, he insinuated, not seriously. Well, here we are. Ninth round. I think he's taking it very, very seriously. I think he has some questions about his own stamina. But Sterling is a very... tough opponent. He is tough to fight. Again, Mark trying to keep Sterling outside three straight times. He's giving him the shoulder. Okay, and now he clinches. Sterling Corner has complained that it's if you're going to penalize my man for throwing him down, penalize him for holding. My man's just trying to throw him down because he's being held all the time. And again, Breland clinching. Mark clinching again. Starling trying to fight and Breland trying to hang on. There's Joey Fariello on the lower right of your screen. Starling in red, little puffiness around both eyes now. But it just keeps strong punches. The body punches are landing. And that, but that left by Mark to the body left himself open, as we talked about earlier, to a right-hand counter, and he caught a right on the chops. And he looks tired. Mark Freeland sucking for air right now. And Starling now beginning to show effects from the body punches. You know, that's a tiring tactic, leaning on your opponent. Chris, Mark Breland right now is exhausted. He is exhausted. His mouth is good oh, by Breland. His best shot, and he didn't go down. His best right-hand shot, and Starling is standing. Joey Fariello sees that his man is tired. He's got the stool up with a big left around. He's got that stool about eight inches They'll get a rest in 50 seconds of round nine. Mark Freeland trains very, very hard, and he should get a second win, but he's going to need one. And unloading now is Starling, and Freeland comes back. The best exchange. For both fighters, it's their third of 1987. 13 rounds of fighting for Starling. 17 rounds for the champion Breland. Inactivity may be showing up here. Snapped away at the moment of impact. Mark Breland, no effective punches, any grabs. Right now, the aggression and the, and the force of
passion of the fight is all coming from Marlon Starling. Starling fighting like he knows it's his last shot. Especially at the end of that last round of the night, as we're in round 10. Another good right, not flush, but scoring. champion in blue, headhunting thus far in the 10th round. Went to the body effectively in the last round. And his corner told him those were the most effective punches against Starling. There's one. Mark was a little bit better here. But this time it's Starling that takes the, takes the dive a little bit. Ground the halfway point of the tenth round here in Columbia, South Carolina. Only the second boxing match ever in this city, capital city. And Breland and both of them. These people from Columbia are getting spoiled with this fight. Fight is getting better. Not a lot of clean punches, but a, a grueling test for have, Mark Breland. We have the current odds on that great field at Saratoga and the Travers Stakes. What a lovely place. And what a Challenging race for all of those contenders that you'll be seeing live right here on ABC's Live World of Sports. Good looking work by Freeland, especially with the left. And a lot at stake right here. Both welterweights. Mark Freeland out busying Marlon Starling right now. Starling coming back. Good right hand. ABC's okay, sports featuring this WBA World Motherway Championship will continue after this commercial and a word from your local station. Coming up to 10 seconds. Tenth round. We'll be back after. No, okay, come on. World champion Mark Breland coming out for the 11th round in his first title defense against Marlon Starling. Confusing, tough challenger from Hartford, Connecticut. There have been spin downs, wrestling downs, but no knockdowns. Neither fighter cut at this point. Breland's corner, they feel that they have really hurt and tired Starling and begged Breland, their charge, to do it with a left and a right and get it over with. I don't think it's going to be quite that easy. Inspirational rather than just a strategy. I think they're trying to pick Mark up. I think they're trying to tell him that he's hurting Marlon Starling more than I think he actually is. There's no question his punches have had some effect. This is the 11th round, the first time Mark Breland has ever been in the 11th round, and he's in trouble right now. He is being caught. He has been hit with power punches about six, and he's hurt. And oh, he's there down. He is down with two minutes. Two minutes to go in the 11th round. As a pro, it's his first time knocked down. And he He's is not going to make it. it. He has lost his it's championship. Over. Starling wins it. After a minute and 10 seconds with the count, there's a guy that since 1979 has won at the title, and he has gotten it. Marlon Starling, 28 years old. His brother, Cody, is over in his corner. His son, Marlon Jr., is here. His mom is here. He is down on the deck now from the adulation of George Cruz, his trainer. Meanwhile, sitting on the stool, almost helpless, is Mark Breland, who won the title with a seven-round knockout in Atlantic City over Harold Albrecht in February. Chris, this crowd in Columbia, South Carolina is cheering the underdog Marlon Starling, who came in here, everybody gave him a chance, but nobody, I don't think, really believed that he could do what he just did, which was to destroy Mark Breland with superior conditioning and coming on in the championship rounds after round 10. What a sensational performance. And it caught a tiring Mark Breland, who started to tire at about the fifth round. Marlon's trying to get through right now. Mark is totally conscious. He's tired, he's on his stool. Marlon's trying to get through the mob of people around Mark. 
He cannot get through. He's being pushed back. Well, he's still only going 10 rounds three times. The incoming at about 110 of the 11th round with a flurry of combination punches from that five foot eight inch tiger from Hartford, Connecticut. And there you see the massage of the former champion. Watch now. There was really nothing to let us know, Chris, that this kind of an onslaught was going to be forthcoming for Marlon Starling. The right just missed, but it drove Breeling back. He's trying to duck out of the way, but the uppercut caught him on the ropes. Breeling with no defense, trying to hold on, not strong enough to do so. And on the judges' card, Breeland way. And that left hook was the punch that ended it, Chris. Yes. 97, 92, 96, 91, 99, 89. But this is the way to win a championship. We said coming in that this was the kind of the fight that was going to test Mark Breeland's chin and his stamina, and I think he failed both tests, Chris. Remember, Starling, we indicated earlier, had more knockouts in his career than... Freeland had fights. 18 Watch. professional, this is the 19. Watch for the left. Mark ducking way down. And Marlon will come up with a left hook that's the punch that ends it. Right All there. Right. All right, here in Columbia, South Carolina. The winner at 138 of the 11th round on a technical knockout. New champion, there he is, Marlon Starling of Hartford, <laughs> Connecticut. We'll be back to talk to the new champion a little bit later on in this capital city. Heading back to Columbia, South Carolina to complete the story. away from Mark Breland. We'll be sending you back to Chris Schenkel and Alex Swallow. Marlon Starling of Hartford, Connecticut, and his 46th bout as the new WBA welterweight champion of the world. Coming at 138 of the 11th round, Tony Perez, the referee, stopping it. Breland holding the title for about six months. The sixth Connecticut boxer to hold a world title. Let's go into the ring and meet Marlon Starling with Alex Swallow. Marlon. Congratulations to you. Marlon was just going over to congratulate oh. to commiserate with Mark Breland, who's still sitting on his stool. Unbelievable, Marlon. Did you, in your heart of hearts, believe that you could come up with that kind of result? I know that I was going to get him in the late rounds. I believe I was behind on all, all kinds. But you know what? I was digging low. I was talking to him. He was breathing from probably the sixth round on. The, the man, his, his jab is a little more potent than I thought it was. But, like, once again, Marlon's styling for the best fighters out there. The, the best undefeated fighters. And you know what? I'm the champ of the whole wide world. Marlon, when you fought Donald Curry the first time for the title, you weren't as aggressive as you were here. You weren't, didn't appear that you were ready to take the title. Do you feel now that, uh, that this proves that you have world championship caliber? I mean, obviously it proves that, but I'm just saying that what is the difference between now and when you fought Donald Curry the first time? I think I have a better team work with me. I think I trained harder. I was stronger. Take nothing away from the champion. Mark had a great jab. Marlon Stalin still didn't fight his best. I mean, I won the fight. I, I didn't like my performance to the, the utmost. My, my manager, I got I to gotta thank everybody. I have to, one thing I want to do is, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank Sam Kane, the, a friend of mine who died years ago that said one day Marlon Stalin will be the champion of the world. Sam, up above, I am the champ of the whole wide world. I want to thank everybody who helped me. My, my other manager that's home, Rick Sorensen, well, thanks a lot for everything. You know what? The belt is coming to Hartford, where, Connecticut. Where do you go from here, Marlon? Who do you fight next? I don't know. I have to discuss that with my managers. You know, we'll fight anybody. Well, Marlon, we'll let you enjoy this one first. Congratulations on a sensational Marlon. performance. Okay, that's the joy of victory, as we say, on Wide World of Sports here at the Columbia Auditorium. And here we get a look. At the beginning of the end, it was a right hook, an overhand right, a left, another right, another jab, trying to get him free. So there is the left hook that put him down. That was the most punishing punch that Breland threw today, but he caught the former champion on the chin of very tired Mark Breland here in the 11th round. 138 of the 11th round, the new champion, Marlon Starling of Hartford, Connecticut. Great action near the end of a lot of the rounds, but this was the telling one. And the weeping uncontrollably, complaining of sore ribs and a stomach, was this 24-year-old amateur world Olympic gold medalist and world WBA welterweight champion Mark Breland. He'll learn a lot from this fight, believe me, and he'll be back. There's the champion, Marlon Starling. We'll come back, hopefully, with an interview with... Maybe two, three weeks in training. And uh, in the fight, you know, I was getting hit there, and 
Um, I, you know, it's no excuse because, you know, Marlon's a great fighter. He was in the fight. I, you know, I thought I was winning the fight. Um, hit me with a left hook and a dip to my left side and I felt the pain shoot up. So when I came back up, the right hand was coming. I believe it was the first time I, I pulled out in the fight. And um, then the punches started coming. So as I was dipping back and forth, I started feeling the pain even more. And it felt like it just started to swelling up. And I just cut my, you know, shortening it off the breath. 